Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I am gonna get straight into this one today because it is a sit down chat. I wanted to talk today about a big topic, especially, no, I'm not gonna say just in women, men get it too. We are talking about body confidence and insecurities because it is a hot topic. I just wanna start off by saying I think all bodies are beautiful and everyone should be confident and happy in who they are. You know, I'm loving Body by Grace, of course I think that. However, I am a realist sometimes with this stuff and I know me personally, I struggle with body insecurities daily. So I wanted to talk about it because it's something that we talk about but we sort of don't talk about because it's a bit of a taboo subject. It's not always good to talk about things that make you uncomfortable and bring attention to them, but I'm making myself a bit uncomfortable today and I'm gonna bring attention to them. First, I wanna start off with just a little bit about my body history. So as I've mentioned, you're probably sick to death of hearing about it. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome and it is a hormonal disorder that affects tons of things in your women's health system, like your hormones, your weight gain, can affect your period, your hair growth, like it, it comes with a variety of of things because it's a it's a chronic condition the weight gain and the way i carry weight on my frame makes me insecure every day and i am trying so hard to build my self-confidence and i also wanted to talk about some of the ways that i am building up my self-confidence because that is something that has been so hard for me this if you had told me two years ago that i'd be on youtube talking about my insecurities, I would have told you, you were wackadoodle do. So I want to talk about what I have done to get myself to here, to be the confident, well, somewhat confident lady I am today. So first things first, recently with my body confidence, I have been, and I preach this, I try to give myself some positive affirmations about my body. And it sounds crazy, but I will just like, stand in front of a mirror and even if it's just one or two things like I take that time and I clear any negative thoughts out of my head and I say I like my smile I like my eyes I like my shoulders I like my the wrists it's really hard for me to get there because it can be very common to tear yourself down and tear other people down but I want to be building up. I'm sick of the tear down. I just want to be in a positive environment with positive people, thinking positively about myself. Yeah, so that's the first thing I do to build my confidence. Number two, I try to push myself out of my comfort zone to an extent. In this sense, I'm in with clothing. I wear crop tops now. I show off my stomach a bit more. Sometimes I try to wear a tight dress. I like just try to push myself out of my comfort zone a bit more to get myself familiar and comfortable with exposing my insecurities, if that makes sense. There's this concept, I'm doing my education degree, so we talk about this a lot. It's called your zone of proximal development. It's whack. when you're a little bit uncomfortable, you've got a little bit of support, and it just, that's where you develop the most, is in that zone. So that's where I try to put myself. I think of that all the time. I'm like, am I doing the most to get the most out of this experience? So that, I try to push myself. So that's with clothing, no, makeup's not really body comp. I guess it's confidence. Makeup too, like I'll try and explore different looks and do a bit of an eyeliner moment and, you know, push myself. <clears throat> Rude. Push myself a little bit with my makeup because that's one way you can really jazz things up. And then with my personal experiences, so doing things that I normally wouldn't do. I've been doing more of that lately and it's it's hard, but it does help with my confidence. I don't know why, it's just, for me personally, making myself a little bit uncomfortable means that I'm pushing myself and I'm trying things new and that's really exciting and yeah, anyways, what else? What else do I do to build confidence? I have more than this, I swear. Oh, this is a huge one. Another way that I have helped build my confidence is adapting my Instagram space, AKA taking people out of my Instagram who make me feel upset. Like sometimes I will look at posts and I'm going, that makes me feel 
horrible about myself. I was the sucker for Instagram shame. Before I started this page, I would name and shame myself all the time. I would look at photos of myself and I would think I look disgusting and fat and I would hate my body and be mad at myself that I let my body get this way or that my body was built like this and I just feel miserable. I love when people are honest and open about stuff and oh, I love when health and fitness people who look skinny on Instagram will do like the posing versus real life and bloating versus not bloated. Like I love that stuff because it's real. And when you only see these picture perfect moments of people's lives and then you compare it to your whole life, obviously it's not gonna be the same because your life is not Instagram. The exact point of Instagram is to highlight moments in your life. It's not a real, and that's why I love YouTube. YouTube is more like, we'll cover it across the board. YouTubers can be really honest and show what's going on. And so I'm adapting my social media space a bit to build my self-confidence because that's been a big one. And it is a game changer, let me tell ya. Those are probably the, I think that was three. Those are probably the three things I do the most to build my self-confidence right now. Anyways, okay. Now we're on to my insecurities. This one is a bit hard for me to talk about because I am pointing out things for people to look at when they see me. Like my friends, if you're watching and you see me in real life, please don't look for these because if I see you looking at them, I'm gonna be even more insecure. But I just wanna talk about it because, you know, awareness, it's happening to you gal grace too. You're not alone, I promise. My number one insecurity, by far, my stomach. So with PCOS, it is very common that it leads to troubles with weight gain and weight control. And because people with PCOS generally have more testosterone, it accumulates around the torso much more because that's where men accumulate their weight faster, if that makes sense. So my stomach, I hold quite a bit of my weight there and I always, I'm really insecure about it. For so long, I would wear like long baggy t-shirts, cover it up, I would never wear anything tight. And like I said, I'm pushing myself out of that boundary now with clothing, but by far it gets me even thinking about, mm. Like an instance, last night I went out with my friends. Ugh, I tried on this outfit earlier on the day, I felt really good, I got bloated, my stomach looked bigger than it usually does and I felt so insecure and luckily my friends are beautiful and they gave me some words of reassurance and told me that they liked my outfit and they liked what I was wearing and they thought I looked good. So I'm lucky in that sense that I have friends that when I have those moments of insecurity, they go, Grace, stop being silly. You look great. And I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Anyways, insecurity number two, my legs. This is a really common one that not many people talk about. I am so insecure about my legs. I have got I would say stocky legs. There are my legs. Can you see that one? Like they're no joke. They're a good strong base and they, they are strong. You wouldn't want to get kicked by one of these legs, let me tell you, because it wouldn't feel very nice. But it still makes me insecure when I wear skinny jeans, when I wear skirts sometimes. And I think that's a really common one. Like girls get quite insecure about their legs because girl shorts and skirts can be quite short, especially when you're a young girl. You know, back in my early teens, mini skirts were in. Denim skirts and like, if, if you wore a midi skirt, everyone would be like, what are you doing? So I had to fight that a lot of the way through my teenage years when I was wearing shorts in summer and also because I live in Australia, summer is hot here. I would always be so insecure and people would make comments here and there and then it just makes everything so much worse. But I love my legs a lot more now. They do a lot for me. They walk me around. They're strong. They're, you know, they are what they are and I love them now. So I'm a bit over that insecurity, but I just wanted to bring it up because I think it's one lots of people have, but no one really talks about. And my last, probably biggest insecurity would be my stretch marks. <sighs> Again, this is another one that no one really talks about. So when I started going through puberty, I you know, started developing and then I put on weight and then lost weight and then put on weight and then lost weight. This is the yo-yo dieting that I was talking about in another video. I'll put the link here if you wanna go and watch that one. But I just developed stretch marks. It's just one of those things. Some people get them and some people don't. Hearing people talk about stretch marks sometimes, they're talked about in a really negative manner. And that's why it made me so insecure about them for so long. Because people would associate them with 
pregnant women or people who were very, 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 very overweight. Like they would be like, I remember in school people saying like, you only have stretch marks if you are enormous. And then I've met people who are like stick thin and have them just from being tall. Like you get stretch marks if you go this way or this way. Like <laughs> that's just what happens. I've tried some of the oils and I haven't, I know I haven't seen the best results and I've just sort of come to the acceptance that they're part of me now and it is what it is and I just have got to love them and they are, you know, just part of my body. But I know it's something a lot of people struggle with, young girls especially really struggle with the thought that they like have stretch marks. Cause same thing, I thought for so long that only like pregnant women got them. And then as I got older and I started talking to more girls, I was like, yeah, I have them, I have them, I have them, I have them here and here. And then you get them all over your body. You not everyone gets them all over their body, but you can get them all over your body. So there's another one of my insecurities. If any of these insecurities are you, let me know down below because I think they're common, but I don't really know. Like I, Again, insecurities isn't a huge conversation that people have because you don't want to draw attention to something you're already insecure about. Am I right? Anyways. Now, this one is a big one. So insecurities all around, this is what I want to talk about. I was having a conversation with two of my beautiful friends the other day, Brooke and Georgia. If you're watching, hey guys. <laughs> I was talking about this sort of revelation I've had lately um, around research that I've been doing and making myself more aware of how other people are feeling in this process because I am very aware of the fact that people who struggle with weight gain are not the only people that have body insecurities. And for a long time, I dismissed that. And I dismissed people who were smaller than me and thought that there was something wrong with their body or something they didn't like about their body. And I would just, totally dismiss it. And I think back about it now and I'm like, Grace, that is so horrible. Because if someone did that to me, I'd be very upset. But you know, people, when they're young, make mistakes and you know, I've acknowledged that and I'm working on it. But what I mean by this is, no matter what size you are, if you are a size six or a size 16, you can still have body insecurities and most people do and that is okay what i don't think is okay is to dismiss people's feelings based on their size because if you think about it on the on the other foot if someone did that to someone like me then that would be quite offensive really so i now when someone talks to me and they're a size six or a size eight and they're talking about how they're feeling really insecure because they've put on weight and they want to get back to the gym and they want to tone up. I no longer go, what are you even talking about? You're so skinny. No, you don't need to. I go, oh my gosh, I need to go to the gym too. Let's go together. So I think that's where my mindset has changed with this a little bit over the past year. It's honestly, and that's embarrassing. It's been a year, but I'm 20. <laughs> 20 is still young. So I think the fact that I'm here already is okay. <laughs> Especially since it is quite hard to, uh, I'm trying to put this in a way that, I think sometimes when you are bigger, it's hard to empathize with people who are much smaller than you, complaining about things that overtake your life. I have conversations with my sister about this all the time. And we talk about how pain is subjective and the thought of pain is subjective and pain feels different in everyone's bodies got me thinking the same way about insecurities. Insecurities feel different to everyone. So what may not be significant in your life, AKA someone putting on two or three kilos, may be a huge deal in that person's life. So I'm working on not dismissing people anymore and just letting them have a moment because I think really important you know so I think that's just about all I have to talk about I have put my body confidence tips up here if you want them screenshot them because we all deserve to be confident and be loved and love our own bodies and that's from loving body by grace so of course I believe that but I know it is easier said than done and I'm still working on it just like I'm sure lots of people are. And if you're watching this and you're feeling like this and you wanna talk about it, please feel free to message me and let's talk about insecurities and how we can get over them together because I'm still working on it too. 
Okay guys, so that is about all for today's video. Thank you so much for being here and watching. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button and I will see you next week with another video.